This is an example of the case where you're going to have to add a supplemental air barrier. So remember, on the exterior, we have our primary air barrier, which is the exterior sheathing. And on the interior of the house, we have our primary air barrier, which is our drywall plane here. But in this case, the interior air barrier, the drywall, is not in contact with the thermal control layer, the bats that are behind here in this wall. Uh, so the, the drywall is going to come out on the face of this fireplace cavity here, and it's going to serve its purpose from an aesthetic point of view, but it's not going to enclose the insulation and give us that interior air barrier assembly approach that the code is looking for. So we need to get a supplemental air barrier back against the studs in this cavity and to enclose this insulation so that we have a true air barrier assembly here. And in that air barrier, air sealing and insulation installation uh, table, it talks about that in this type of location, but specifically behind tubs on exterior walls uh, and, and so forth, tubs, showers, shower seats is another place where you'll see this quite often here. The problem in this location is that they've insulated it first, then they did their overframing, um, and they've installed the fireplace here. So now it's quite hard to get in there to add a supplemental air barrier. And if they're going to use a flexible air barrier, it becomes really difficult to actually install it and make it work. A better approach is if the framer understood what was happening, they would pre-insulate it, potentially with a bat, then they would install the air barrier behind here, and then they would do their overframing and installation of the fireplace. So it's all about sequencing the, the construction, and that's why I say that 90% of these details are actually the framer's responsibility here. The other option that they could do is get the air barrier up first, poke a hole in that air barrier on either side of any horizontal blocking, and then dense pack the cavity through that hole. So the air barrier becomes the netting material that the fiberglass or cellulose or any type of blown product would be blown through and held in place in that cavity. And then again, you would overframe after you've done, put that supplemental air barrier in place. So again, it's all about the sequencing here to make it successful to meet the intent of the code and to meet the performance expectations that we have of our homes. So once more, I want to talk about the idea of adding a supplemental air barrier system to ensure that we have the assembly approach covered when we talk about the building thermal envelope. So we have our primary exterior air barrier, uh, which is our sheathing and the continuity of our sheathing. We have the uh, primary interior air barrier, which is our drywall and the continuity of our drywall. And in this case, in this fireplace case, the drywall is not in contact with the insulation. So we have to add a supplemental air barrier. And you can see the brown board here that they've installed as the air barrier material. So the drywall at the front of the fireplace becomes just aesthetics. We have our building thermal envelope behind the fireplace here. Um, again, it is an issue of ensuring that we sequence things correctly and that the framer who's responsible for about 90% of these air barrier details, sees the situation and understands how to deal with the situation. So we wanna get our air barrier up first. Then in this case, they've cut holes in the air barriers where the big, large blobs of pink foam are so they could stick a fill tube behind there and fill up the cavity with blown insulation in this particular house. Otherwise, you might have to pre-bat that assembly and then install your air barrier because the proper sequence is get the air barrier up first, then do all of the framing for this fireplace surround, and then insert your fireplace box uh, so that we can actually get the air barrier installed correctly. Otherwise, trying to get back there after the fact of building all of this extra framing for the fireplace box it's almost impossible to get a clean, well-performing air barrier system that's part of that building thermal envelope accomplished in that case. One other thing that we'll see in this particular application is that in essence, we have a drop ceiling uh, or a penetration to the top. So you can see again, 
it's imperative that the framer sees that, that they put the OSB against the bottom cord of the truss first, and then they did all of their overframing there. So that there's complete separation between this balloon wall or this cavity situation here and the unconditioned attic ventilation air that otherwise would just be dropping into this whole assembly here. And in essence, if that wasn't there, that cap wasn't there, this would be actually unconditioned attic space. I would be feeling the temperature of the air that's in that attic space. So it's super important and the code requires it that we get those types of caps installed first and then we do any overframing afterwards. In this case, we did overframing for the fireplace box, but if you had a drop ceiling, you would want to get that cap to the bottom cord of the truss and then do the overframing for the drop ceiling in that case.